Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine. So today we are continuing in our talk about reaction energy, uh, which is chapter 16. And today we're going to talk about how we calculate the heats of reaction. So again, these are enthalpy changes. So we begin by defining the standard molar heat of formation. And that is the heat released or absorbed when one mole of a compound is formed by combination of its elements at standard room temperature, which is 25 degrees C. So again, it's the molar heat of formation. So again, it's the formation of various things um, from the elements. And again, it's got this special symbol delta H of formation, so subscript F and superscript zero, meaning formation. And in the textbook, there's an appendix table, A14, appendix 14, on page 862, where you can look these up. And so, for instance, if you were looking up the formation of liquid water from gaseous hydrogen and oxygen, um, you would find in the table that that value is negative 285.8 kilojoules, and that would be kilojoules per mole of water produced. Um, for sodium and chlorine combining to form sodium chloride, the heat of formation is negative 411. Uh, sulfur combining with oxygen to make sulfur dioxide. Uh, and again, um, I wanted to point out, first of all, that all three of these reactions are exothermic because their delta H of formation is negative. Um, and it's also good to point out that elements in their standard states have a heat of formation of zero. So we like to say that the universe makes the elements for us. Actually, it's probably inside of stars like our sun. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the universe makes the elements for us, so they are all uh, said to have a heat of formation of zero. Now, a negative delta H of formation indicates a substance is more stable than its free elements. Uh, when we first started talking about ionic compounds and actually about um, elements, and we talked about the fact that it's very rare to find sodium in its elemental form anywhere on our planet because it is so reactive, as are the other uh, group 1 alkali metals, that they are not just naturally occurring that they immediately form a compound with something. So again, there are various tables um, in various books that will show you the molar enthalpies of formation at 298K, which is 25 degrees C. That is what we usually talk about as room temperature. Um, so here is an example of such a table, and you'll see that graphite carbon in its um, elemental form is zero. Come down here, you'll see hydrogen is zero. And then you'll see uh, various numbers for various things being formed. So um, now we can talk about the molar heat of combustion, which again, the delta H COMB for combustion. The definition is the heat released when one mole of a compound combusts or undergoes combustion. Now, we got to remember that heat is released when something undergoes a combustion reaction. The reason we burn stuff is because energy is released. We use that energy either as, for instance, uh, light in the terms of a candle to light a room. We don't heat a fire in our fireplace, light a fire in our fireplace because it makes us cold, it releases energy. So remember that combustion is going to be exothermic. So if you look in the table, um, again, another appendix, this is a, a A5, and this one is just heats of combustion. So the um, combustion of propane to form carbon dioxide on water releases roughly 2,220 kilojoules per mole. So if we look at the combustion of C8H18, this is octane, 8 times 2 is 16 and 2 is 18. So again, these are alkanes. For octane, the energy released is, again, about 5,500 kilojoules per mole. Now think about it. Propane is what we use in um, 
typically uh, are gas grills, um, and octane is often used as fuel in cars. And if you look at it, how much more bang you get for your buck for each mole, you're getting over twice as much energy per mole produced. So calculating the heats of reaction, we use something called Hess's Law that states that the overall enthalpy change in a reaction is equal to the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual steps in the process. In order for a reaction to occur, all the reactants have to have their bonds broken and all of the products must have their bonds formed anew. So when we calculate it using Hess's law of heat summation, again stating that you can add two or more thermochemical equations to get your final equation, then you can also do this with the heats of reaction for each step. So the uh, equation that we use for delta H uh, for Hess's law of summation, so the delta H of formation is equal to the sum of all of the delta H's of formation of the products minus the sum of all of the delta H of formation of the reactants. Very important to remember this, that when you're calculating delta H, and later on we'll learn about delta G and delta S as well, it's always products minus reactants, and this uh, Greek letter sit Sigma is usually used for math, chemistry, and physics for summation. So sum of the delta H's of the products minus the sum of the reactants. This will also show whether the net reaction is exothermic or endothermic. So if your delta H ends up negative, it's exothermic. If your delta H ends up as positive, it is endothermic. So here's a sample problem. What is the delta H of formation for the reaction between gaseous carbon monoxide with oxygen to form gaseous carbon dioxide. So the equation looks like this. Two carbon monoxides plus one oxygen yields two CO2s. We would look up our delta H's. So here is my carbon monoxide. Here is my oxygen. Remember it's its elemental state, so it is zero. And then here is my carbon dioxide. So again, for this reaction, using delta um, H equals the sum of the delta H's of the products minus the sum of the delta H's for the reactants. So this is using Hess's law of summation. Plugging in my numbers from my previous slide, I will get a delta H of negative 566 kilojoules. Um, so that would be the overall delta H for this reaction. It is a negative number indicating it is an exothermic process. And again, looking up in Appendix A5 for the enthalpy of combustion for carbon monoxide, it is negative 566.0. So again, negative 283 kilojoules per mole times 2. In this equation, we have 2. We get the same number, so it works. So that is all for today. Um, in my next video, we'll talk about driving forces for reactions. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.